Hey folks, it's IOA3 and we're back with some more World of Tanks. So as you can see, this is Ronic in his T-54 and that's an interesting camo. Go! Is that pink? Orange? Whatever. Anyways, um, obviously this Mountain Pass is a tier 9 game and don't get run over by a T-29. So, before Ronic gets into this game, I do want to say that, uh, I've been noticing my mic, my mic's been a little bit wonky lately. Uh, you guys should know that I am getting a new mic at some point in time. It's just, it's on its way. So when it gets here, then hopefully my mic will start to sound much, much better. So I am sorry if, if uh, <laughs> you guys have been noticing my mic being a little bit funky lately. Um, I guess I've just used this thing too much and it's starting to go. So, either way. New mic is on its way. And Ronick is getting right into this. You will notice it. He is the first tank down around this end. The rest of his team are actually kind of bunching up at that center spot where a lot of the. Uh, a lot of times, newer players will make that mistake. Either that newer or greedy players will make that mistake. Uh, the heavy tanks need to roll right on past there. The mediums and the TDs do have the option of stopping and taking pot shots across if they have somebody right for them so if when they you know uh, rock managed to get spotted he's ducking me on the rock and could take a pot shot to the back of the mx13 at 90 and he missed because the 90 got low enough the shot just went above him that's okay now ronick is actually tall enough to use this huge ray of on the rocks i didn't know you could do that in the 54 I didn't think he'd be tall enough. Oh, that's awesome. It's going to afford him some free damage out on the enemy team. What are they going to do? They're going to fire back on the tiny little portion of, of his turret? It's going to bounce. The T-54 turret. He's just going to pull back up into this spot. Firing at the low places of that E-75. Now, he is firing gold rounds. Uh, but, I mean, this is a T-54. So... You can't help it when you're firing at enemy top tier heavens. You do really do have to use gold. Otherwise, you will not pen even more places in the T-54. It just doesn't have that penetration values that you really like. You can see, even with gold, oh, come on. Show me. He's flipped around. Oh, you set the guy. Nice. Uh, yeah, so 330 penetration and... 201 penetration with standard rounds. That really does mean he has to use gold rounds uh, if he wants to penetrate this E75 reliably. Uh, even halfway reliably. Ooh, it, a bot. Can he thread the needle? Nope. <laughs> Apparently that's a no. And he, he's juking back and forth because he doesn't want to get, get shot in return. You notice he has... Now that he's killed the uh, the tier 9 heavies, or driven them back, he's switched back to his normal rounds. Because he doesn't need gold rounds exclusively, he just needs them for the enemy heavies. He's going to be firing into this go, go, go. WZ, this, assuming the WZ pulls back. Beautiful. Good job. And I think he tracked the WZ there on the corner. It's going to leave it open for the Centurion. Nope, Centurion doesn't take the shot. Either didn't have the angle or didn't like the shot he had. Already dropped a shell right on top of him. Unfortunately, doing a bunch of damage and injuring a crew member. Who is that? The gunner guy. That's bad. Now he is switching back over to gold rounds because E75 is still here. And that's the Fosh. I don't think he's going to get clean shot on the Fosh because the rock formation he is yep, going to be able to take out the E75. So the E75 does get a dam damaging shot in return. I would quite kind of like to see where that kind of trade. Because uh, it didn't sound like I was a gold round. Oh, it just went through his turret. That's slightly depressing, I'm sure. Now, again, he's back to regular ammo. And he's going to keep pressing this WZ on the corner. Waiting for this guy to pull out so he can get a shot off. Now, their team is losing. Five, or er, yeah, it's five kills for us versus seven for the enemy so we're down to about half of our force whereas the enemy are still on two-thirds of theirs 
Matt Fosh has just got tracked down in the open. Ronk is going to try and get a cheeky shot on him. Though pulling at him from this ice 3 is going to be bad unless he gets lucky. Oh, nope. Gets taken out by the IS-6 and he's... Nope, don't. That's the side scraping shot. It's just not going to penetrate that IS-3 side. That shot, however, had a decent chance of penetrating because of the effect the IS-3 straightened itself out and gave Ronick his underbelly. Nice job setting the WZ on fire. Who used an automatic fire extinguisher. So that cost the enemy at least 20 grand right there. 10 grand if you bought it on sale. Now, unfortunately, our base has been completely taken over by the enemy team. So Ronick pushes up, takes out this WZ. He wants to clear out this side as fast as possible so he can get, can get back to base if he needs to. The upside is we have a T-95 who's turned around and is defending uh, against that T-54. Go, go, go. The downside for that is the T-94, or T-95 can obviously get circled fairly easily by the T-54 if he doesn't get the uh, the medium's tracks off fairly soon. And by the looks of it, he's just taking a beating. Ron's going to get some free damage off on the side of this M103 who's not really paying attention. And now that he's it, he is paying attention, it gives the 704 and the T95 time to finish off the enemy T54. He's going to run up here and get damage on the side of this T28. Beautiful shot through the front cheek of that turret. It's about the only place on the front of a, uh, a T28 you can reliably penetrate if you have a decent penetration gun. Um, there, there's of course the machine gun uh, spot on the front of his armor, but that's yeah, very hard to hit. Good shot on the M03, harassing him when he's not looking, and he, knowing he just fired, he can get another shot off. Unfortunately, it doesn't go in. It does allow the IS-6 to get a shot, and then he's counting on the the M03 not having the gun elevation here, and he got lucky. That was not an arty shot. I, that was probably the Yag Tiger having a shot at him. Now, the, now our friendlies are uh, making sure that Kiwi 4 can't cap. And so because of that, Ronick uses his minimap to juke the 103 into thinking he's going back. But in fact, he's going to circle around and finish off the 703. Or he's going to make me look at an idiot and he's actually just going to run for, straight for the enemy base and go for the RD. Ooh, there's the Artie. Enemy Fires on the move. Go, go, go. Artie was already pre-aimed looking for him and fired his shot. Now Ronick knows he has at least 30 seconds to get up there and kill that artillery before the artillery can react. Now, ooh, he's actually go just going to juke out the Artie. Oh, the Artie ran down the cliff side. That's a beautiful play on the Artie's... Uh, uh, I'm not certain how Ron knew that happened. The only thing I can see is there's a tree down. So he may have noticed that tree fall, whereas I didn't. And just figured the Artie was juking back on him. Beautiful play on the Artie. A ballistic. Almost got away with it, unfortunately. Not quite. It just needs an HE shell. Come on, what an HE shell. Nope, he's going to stay with his AP. I'd like to see him load an HE shell here and just... Oh, well, never mind. T95 takes out the M103 while he's distracted. Now, there is a Yag Tiger who's probably either under the bridge or backing up towards his base. Either way, um, these guys are either going to get the jump on him right now. There we go. There's the jump. And the Yag Tiger is going to have some trouble. He's either going to be able to look at Ronick, which cake Ronick is going to fire through his front plate not not particularly well he's gonna have to go gold if he wants to penetrate that front upper plate of the eye tiger but it doesn't really matter because the as long as the eye tiger is looking at runner the t95 gets free shots into the, the side of it which is exactly what happens great game <laughs> how he says bye about 2000 xp with premium non-doubled this of course was his master badge first class he got a high caliber and the top gun.
and did quite a bit of damage, not killing everybody, everybody that he shot at, and actually not getting any damage off on the Fosh. The Fosh got uh, lucky. Well, no, actually, in the end, he got dead. Carrying his team, but not... I mean, these two guys carry the team fairly equally. The T9-5 did amazing defense, and Ronick was the offense and the flanker. Without these two, or without either one of them, this game would have been a loss. Great effort by both of them. El Diablo deserves some props there. And good props by the Artie for not actually panicking and juking at Ronick fairly well. If he hadn't knocked down that tree, he probably would have got out cleanly and been able to assist his team in maybe killing that T95 and then possibly winning the game. Unfortunately, Ronick used a lot of credits on gold rounds. So the only reason he made money was because he had premium account, but that's okay. We can forgive him, right? Most of the shots he fired did, in fact, hit the target for a whole bunch of damage, over 4k damage, and this is pretty awesome. That's a lot of potential damage received and blocked off by his armor. Now, this is an 8.11 update, so some of this was absorbed into his tracks, but meh. I always like this uh, system better. Anyway, so thank you for watching. Thank you so much, Ronick, for saying this in. Thank you for hitting that like or subscribe button. I'll see you next time this IOE throughout. Next.